So now let's talk about vertical curves as we've talked about horizontal. So we've seen how you can design a horizontal curve in the horizontal plane. Now if you really want to take the whole road into consideration or the whole pipeline or the whole uh, anything that you're designing, now you have to take it into two different aspects, one in the horizontal, one in the vertical. So now let's talk about the vertical curves. Okay, vertical curves the same. Uh, just as it denotes vertical, that means they fall within a vertical plane. So if you have certain vertical planes, this is where the vertical curve is going to happen, right inside that plane right there. Okay, then it's along this uh, this vertical uh, the vertical curve inside the vertical plane is now where we can start discussing and talking about, you know, what it is we're looking for. In the vertical, it's real special. What we're talking about mainly is just strictly elevation. Yeah, we're talking about a distance along here. You know, we talked about before that uh, our distance will be in uh, in the horizontal plane, but then our uh, our elevations then along this curve is going to be at certain points going along here, and that's what we're going to be looking for and trying to calculate and figure out. So we know, you know, base you know basically uh, how you can combine the uh, combine the two together. So you guys have all seen examples of vertical curves. We see it, we've, uh, we've driven them, we've looked at them, we, we look at them and say, oh, those look really good, those look cool, that's neat, whatever it is. And the reason we design these is to, to make sure that we can travel properly, um, especially in transportation. It's so we can transition from one, uh, one tangent to another tangent in the vertical plane. If we can make easier transitions, safer transitions, um, anything to, to make it possible that we can continue, uh, continue on. So, uh, so a couple points I want to be able to make sure we, uh, we keep in mind here. So this is if we're looking from the side, uh, like a side profile view of a, um, of a center line, of a, of a reference line. Okay, the first type of curve there is, there's a crest curve. And then the other one we have is a sag curve. And it's just that. Crest is if you're kind of cresting over the, uh, over the hill going down to the other side. Sag curve is obviously going down into, uh, down into the bottom. Okay, and so what it's doing is it's connecting your tangents. So we had before in the horizontal curves we had uh, tangents. Well, we have vertical, we have tangents in the vertical plane as well, which are these right here. So obviously we need some sort of curve to be able to do so. Because you obviously can't come here and drive over, and you can't drive through something like this. It's just not possible. So we have to create a, uh, a curve that allows us to be able to get through there. Now the thing about a crest curve is that there's a negative change in grade. And uh, you kind of wonder, well, that doesn't make sense, right? Because we're, we're going up. Yeah, I understand we hit over and we're going all the way over. What it means is, is the percent grade that you're going so you hear you hear going positive, right? Well, the change is, as you continue going along there, the slope gets smaller and smaller. So you start here at plus two percent, and maybe you end over here at minus two percent. So you can see now it goes from two at one spot, then another spot. And now you're at plus one point eight, and this continues to go down, all the way until you get over to this point where you finally hit the, the, the tangent on the other side, ending at minus 2%. Okay, now a sag curve is the opposite, of course, that you have a positive change in grade. You're going down and negative, and it's gradually adjusting and changing as you're going through the curve until you reach your tangent point at whatever slope that you're going out of it. So now what are curve, vertical curves really, you know, what do we have to think about? Uh, when we're designing vertical curves. Well, the first thing is we have to provide a good fit with the existing ground. Um, that's just, that, that's so you can minimize how much cutting and filling you're doing. That You can minimize the total impact you're having on the environment or whatever it is you're building. Um, and in doing so with a good fit or whatever, then as you Naturally, everything's not perfect. The ground isn't just sitting here waiting, saying, hey, I've got the perfect vertical curve here. You can go ahead and build a road and do whatever you want with it. No, you're going to have some, uh, some variations to it. So you're going to have to have some fill inside here. You can see right here, here's like a fill area. 
You're going to want to know where's a cut area. Well, the cut, obviously, is cutting out the mountain or cutting out of the ground or whatever it may be. So here's a fill and here's a cut. So you're going to balance that. What that does is help you on your budget. It helps you, uh, again, mitigate the impact you're having on the overall project side or whatever it is you're doing. Uh, you want to have uh, maintain ma um, adequate drainage. Okay, what that means is you're talking maybe something down here. What if you have to have a drainage right here? You want to maintain that uh, uh, it's going to it's going to adequately come down here and hit into the into the proper drainage channel, so it's not going to you know create any ponding or puddles or, or any uh, anything else like that. Same thing as you get up here. You want to make make sure and maintain that uh, water's going to go somewhere. The other thing is, as you'll find as you do any sort of design, you're going to have to meet specifications. You have certain grades you have to match. Uh, you'll find this different if you're in the city as opposed to maybe up in the mountains. Up in the mountains, you can find you know some really steep grades that uh, really you know really test the limits of uh, vehicles or or any type of uh, off-roading vehicle. Whereas in the city, it's not designed to be as such. Um, anyways, but so you've got to design to make sure that you're not gonna you're not gonna exceed those grades. The uh, you know the slopes right here as you're going up your tangents going down your tangents. You got to make sure that those aren't exceeding what you what your design is supposed to be. Sometimes as you do any any sort of design work, you have to meet a certain elevation. And what that means is say this point right here on the mountain, you found that you've got to meet that. Well, sometimes to do so, you've got to design your work so that you can meet that elevation, which means you you know, in your design, you can't come up like this and have something totally different. You've got to make sure and maintain that maybe for whatever reason, there's something really important about that. So you've got to, ma you've got to match it. Now you have to fit the grade lines that they, uh, that they connect to, okay? So if you've got certain grade lines on your tangents, you've got to make sure that your, your curve is going to fit those. It can't be too short um, or, or too long. It, you know, it, you just got to make sure it's going to fit inside there properly. Uh, the, one other thing, you've got to have sufficient lengths to meet the meet the specifications on the maximum rate of change. That's another uh, another thing that you're going to have to think about. Remember, I talked about the the uh, grade rate of change or whatever. You know, we're getting smaller and smaller and smaller and smaller until it uh, gets down to be a negative value as you get along that curve. Well, in some areas, you know, due to sight distances or, or uh, um, drainage issues, whatever, you can't, that rate of change of grade can't be too much or too high or too little, whatever it may be. So in talking with the last one then is just that, it's your sight distance. And uh, in the next couple lectures we'll talk about that, but basically what that means is you're coming up over this hill right here, because you are right there, your sight looks like this. So what you have to make sure is that it's not too steep, that you're going to be able to see you know, where's the next car? Where's the next vehicle? Where's the next obstacle? Whatever it may be. This distance between here and here, we consider to be our sight distance, it's really, really important. You can't be going up that curve going 70 miles an hour and then expect to be able to stop within 40 feet at the very top if that's all the sight distance you're given. So you have to be very careful as you do your design. All right, so a vertical curve, it follows the pattern of a general parabola. So here's your equation for a general parabola. And uh, just so we can see what we're talking about, A references right over here. What that is, is here is some sort of uh, base elevation, whatever you're measuring everything off of. Uh, some, some type of vertical datum, which we'll get into later in discussing. But really, it's just telling you what your elevations are coming from. Okay, so A is your beginning point right there. At what elevation that stands to be, whatever distance it is away from here. So if, if this is a zero elevation, A is going to be something. Uh, you know, anyway, so next thing we want to do then is you're going to calculate this. So the B times X of P. All that is is the B is your slope. X of P then is calculating some sort of elevation up to a certain point right there. Last part is the C times X squared of, of whatever P, uh, whatever P your point is right here. Okay, remember A, B, and C, these, these are constants. Okay, X of P is what you're inputting into the equation. And, uh, and to allow, it's this distance, you know, from your beginning point of your vertical curve all the way throughout it. 
Okay, with this uh, this last portion over here, it's basically your, your kind of we'll call it kind of your correction. As soon as you calculate a portion up here, you need to find a way to be able to calculate and get back down to the actual part of the parabola, and that's what this is calculating for you to get there.